Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is now out, and in typical superhero fashion, it is a game filled with an incredible amount of Easter eggs and fantastic references. So this is 50 awesome Easter eggs and details in Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Let's dive on in. Oh, and spoiler alert, of course. We kick things off with Peter Parker's home, or I guess outside of Peter's house where we find out that he lives on AMFAN Street, and the house number is 15. And for those of you that are not aware, this is, of course, a reference to the very first comic book appearance of the webhead himself, which is, of course, Amazing Fantasy 15, hence why AMFAN 15. In fact, the actual Amazing Fantasy 15 issue itself appears on Peter's clothing drawer in his room, and yes, this is a book that previously appeared in his and Miles' rooms in the previous two games. If only this was the real thing, honestly, selling one of these would legitimately help him with all his financial troubles. And the references to Amazing Fantasy do not end there, because of course there is the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man mission that features the first ever photo Peter ever took for the Daily Bugle, which once again is obviously a direct homage to that iconic comic book cover. Next, let's talk about some of the Easter eggs that are actually located inside Peter's home, starting with wheat cakes. Yes, the game actually ends with Peter preparing these wheat cakes for the entire spider crew. But did you know that the actual recipe for the wheat cakes can be found in the game? Here it is, hanging on a pin board. And of course, I just hope that you can read cursive. Now, if any of you end up preparing these, let me know in the comment section below. Peter actually also does have a few of these achievement awards hanging throughout his room. And it is interesting to take notice that the signature on the document seems to read Dr. Stan Lee. Of course, a reference to the legendary Stan the Man Lee himself. Speaking of Stan Lee, unfortunately, we do not get an actual cameo for Stan, but on the bright side, the statue in his memory can still be found in the game by Mick's Diner, along with a plaque that reads, dedicated with love to the man who nourished the hearts, minds, and souls of true believers everywhere. Excelsior. And as if that wasn't cool enough, when you hit level 33 in Marvel's Spider-Man 2, you unlock this into the Spider-Verse suit, which some of you may remember is the suit that Miles buys in the Into the Spider-Verse movie from Stan Lee's costume shop, where he tells him this. Can I return it if it doesn't fit? It always fits eventually well if you take a look at miles's costume in the game he has a tag from stan's shop that reads that same line very cool attention to detail back to peter's house we go another cool detail that can be found in peter's home is the pym science camp pioneer award that is actually hanging in peter's room as well as that previous award we just talked about but the fun part is really the signature on the document itself once again but this time it reads dr hank pym most of you know him better as Ant-Man. It's also cool that both Peter and Norman Osborn display their achievement awards from Hank Pym proudly. They are both science nerds for sure. Finally, it's really cool to see that Peter still has posters of his early days as Spider-Man, or maybe I should be saying the spider hanging in his room where he was competing in wrestling matches, most famously against one Crusher Hogan. Next, let's travel to New York itself, which is filled with lots of made-up companies, brands, and advertising billboards. Of course, it's New York after all. But interestingly enough, there are actually two real brands that appear in the game as well. Those being an Adidas store and a Warby Parker eyewear store. These obviously happen as a result of the real-life collaborations that have taken place between the two brands and Marvel Spider-Man 2. Another incredible new place that you must visit while playing the game is the brand new Baxter Building, which of course is the home base of the Fantastic Four. So not only do we know that the Avengers exist in this universe, but so do the Fantastic Four. Although interestingly enough, it seems like they might have only recently moved in because even their iconic logo is not done being painted onto the top of the building. Now, of course, locations like Avengers Tower, the Sanctum Sanctorum, and the Wakandan Embassy are back. But did you know that you can actually interact with the Wakandan Embassy as Miles Morales? Simply walk up to the entrance and Miles will emote the Wakanda Forever salute. Next, we're traveling over to Coney Island, where there is a ton of really cool Easter eggs, the most obvious of which is, of course, the Speed Demon Roller Coaster Ride. 
This is obviously a reference to the Marvel villain by the same name. In fact, they even have a standee of him throughout Coney Island itself. Next, we have the arcade that we get to spend some time at. Well, the name of said arcade is actually Kadensky's Arcade. This is, of course, a reference to the Marvel villain by the same name, known as Arcade, or his acronym for his name would be AR Kadensky. Another fun fact about the arcade is that if you do all the optional mini games during the Coney Island mission, you can actually unlock these silly costumes to wear. Next, we have this awesome ride, the mascot of which is this giant octopus with a doctor's stethoscope equipped. This is obviously a reference to Doc Ock, the main villain of Marvel Spider-Man. Followed by that, we have the Hydro Bench minigame, which is clearly a reference to the Spidey villain by the name of Hydro Man, whose real alias is actually Morris Bench, hence the name Hydro Bench. You can also stumble across a stage titled the Dazzler stage, which is a reference to the X-Man by the same name. And fun fact, Taylor Swift is actually rumored to be playing the same character in the upcoming Deadpool 3 movie. Additionally is the giant, or I guess I should say big, Ferris wheel by the name of Big Wheel. And this, of course, is a reference to the goofy villain by the same name. Another Marvel reference can be found when playing at the previously mentioned arcade. The whack-a-mole-like game is actually titled Hydra Head Hitters. This is, of course, a reference to the evil Hydra organization from Marvel Comics. And finally, right next door to Coney Island itself is the baseball diamond or the baseball field. And if you run a Spider-Man on said field, all of the bases that are available to you not only will you be rewarded with a playstation trophy but in addition to that it actually has unique dialogue that plays depending on which of the two spider-man you play as and parker does it all with the home run bunt never in all my years have i seen one man accomplish so much by doing so little what a season what a season this next easter egg is both sad but it is neat to see that insomniac cares so much about their people because at this location in the city you can actually find a mural to dan johnson who's a level designer who passed away in 2006 and insomniac decided to honor him with this small gesture in the game and staying on the topic of tributes just like in the previous titles you can indeed visit the gravestones of uncle ben and aunt may as well as the gravestone of miles's father jefferson davis the interesting thing is that you can visit the graves as either Spider-Man during different points in the story of the game to receive unique dialogue. You would not believe the month I've had, Pops. I'm flying solo now. I'm trying to earn it, Mrs. Parker. Parker Luck's back with a vengeance. But also unique to Marvel Spider-Man 2 is the addition of the gravestones for Finn and Rick Mason, confirming that yes, indeed, Finn did pass away in Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now, throughout your adventures in Marvel Spider-Man 2, you will constantly be pinged with random crimes occurring that you can choose to stop. But one of the coolest features in the game is that you will often run into the other Spider-Man already busy taking down the bad guys however what makes this feature even cooler is that as you progress through the story you can actually also run into yuri under her new moniker of wraith and she'll help you take down all the bad guys and even you could run into agent venom harry osborne this encounter is one that most people actually do end up missing because it is only available for a very small portion within the story of the game in fact, it is also the only time that you can have Harry Osborn pre-Venom interacting in-game with Miles Morales' Spider-Man. Another cool element about these encounters is that after completing one of these random crimes, the two Spider-Man in the game will actually recreate this very classic Spider-Man pointing meme. Speaking of cool, this is one of my absolute favorite Easter eggs in the game. If you dive from a tall building and hold down and square, Spider-Man showcases his incredible Rubik's Cube skills, solving the entire thing with plenty of time still left to fire a web and swing away before hitting the ground. 
And speaking of skills, you guys can show off your skills and support for the channel by taking a quick moment to hit the thumbs up button. Thank you so very much for your support. Next, we have this incredible discovery made of an unused Craven the Hunter throne room where you can see Craven's epic looking throne. But more interestingly is what is behind him. And that is the mounted heads of several iconic Spidey villains, including Scorpion, Vulture, Shocker, and even Rhino. Now, although three of these four are outright confirmed to be eliminated by Craven in the game, this possibly also can be used as confirmation of Rhino being gone within this universe as well. Now, as you play Marvel Spider-Man 2, you will surely use the epic spider arm attacks that are accessible to Peter Parker's Spider-Man. But did you know that the actual arms themselves will change to match the design of the suit you're wearing? So if you switch into the Iron Spider suit, the arm design will change accordingly. That is a really cool attention to detail. Next, let's talk about Dima. And if you're scratching your head about who the heck is Dima, that would be Craven's pet tiger that you meet during the infiltration mission as Peter Parker. Well, obviously things don't go so well for Craven, so you might be wondering what happens to Dima. Well, if you visit the Brooklyn downtown zoo, you will actually see that Dima is now a Brooklyn Zoo resident. Not so scary, are you? <laughs> Another resident of New York is the returning Greg Miller shirtless Spider-Man guy, but this time, instead of being at a Halloween party, he's seen hanging out with another kind of funny co-host, Blessing Adoya Jr. on the rooftops of New York. A blink and you will miss it Easter egg is that Peter says the on your left line, on your left, quite a bit when running past other characters. This may very well be an homage to that infamous scene with Captain America and Sam Wilson, from Captain America Winter Soldier. During the flashback scene to Peter and Harry's time at Midtown High School, not only do they deliver an awesome homage to Rick Roll, But we also actually get our first look of what Flash Thompson in this universe looks like. We knew of his existence from the very first game, but this is actually the first time that we get a look at him, albeit in his football uniform. There are multiple times in the game that you dive into the sewers of New York. We'll make sure to take a quick look at the manhole covers themselves because they feature a cool easter egg to Insomniac Games. In fact, Insomniac Games appears once more at the house of Dr. Kurt Connors when making her way through his kitchen Take a moment and pause to zoom in on the two jars of coffee beans laying on his counter, and they will read Insomniac Decaf and Insomniac Robust. There are a ton of cool posters throughout New York City, but none are as cool as this one of a dog called Goose. And it also specifically reads, do not chase. This, of course, is a reference to the I hate chase of Goose line from Marvel Spider-Man. <laughs> The next Easter egg is incredibly cool. When clearing out all the unidentified target side quests in the game, you will be taken to the secret hideout of Craven's brother, the Chameleon. But the coolest part of this incredible spot in the game is actually the piano that will be playing Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata, which of course is also the song that plays in the opening scene of Spider-Man Web of Shadows, another Spider-Man game that heavily involved the symbiote's element. The next Easter egg is for all of you cat fans because the bodega cat known as Spider-Man is back. And this time, Teo has actually hired a mascot to go out there and advertise on his business's behalf. Well, it seems like Teo's cat runs into another competing cat mascot. Well, one of the coolest things about these two is that they're actually voiced by two huge Marvel Spider-Man fans in Alan Tudyk and Nathan Fillion. And the other element that I found cool is that Tails mascot looks more like the OG or the classic Spider-Man design, while the new mascot seems to have a more similar design to Ben Riley or the clone Spider-Man, since this is a clone mascot. A small but nevertheless cool reference is the Frisbee that you see these two gentlemen playing with within New York City. 
This, of course, is a reference to Captain America's shield. Speaking of shields, the infamous Marvel organization known as the Strategic Hazard Intervention Espionage Logistics Directorate, or more commonly simply known as SHIELD, is actually referenced during the Miles Morales Music Museum Tour mission. And since we're on the topic of the Marvel Universe as a whole, you will be happy to know that Nelson and Murdoch's offices are indeed back, even though the launch version of the game, their office plaque appeared blank. Fortunately, a future update to the game did actually bring the nameplates back, so all of you Daredevil fans can rejoice. Another possible reference to Daredevil is actually in this mysterious room that has been found that features an ominous red flag as well as these logos that some believe will end up being Insomniac's take on the faction known as The Hand, who most commonly actually fight Daredevil. So we might actually be getting a Daredevil DLC for Marvel Spider-Man 2. Now the game actually features a couple of bike riding missions, but you can only complete them as Peter. However, if you want to ride the bike outside of those missions while controlling Spider-Man, simply head to this spot in the game and you can actually find a rideable bike and take it for a ride around town. Now, if you get a little too far from the spot, it will freeze and teleport back to its original location, but you can make your way back and ride it all over again. And as if riding the bike was not cool enough with all the hectic things going on within New York, maybe you would rather take a moment of peace and quiet and simply do some yoga with some of the other citizens of New York. And guess what? You can do just that in Marvel Spider-Man 2. I think the yoga people would definitely say namaste. There are some hilarious NPC conversations that you can eavesdrop on throughout New York City but none might be funnier than the one where the NPCs actually acknowledge your presence and begin talking about you. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, stay close to me, babe. You know it. <laughs> Is he still- Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I think so. Okay. Just, Why? I don't know. Just act natural, I guess. How can I? It's a little weird, <laughs> but kind of cool. I guess. Should we ask for a photo? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> nope, he's still there. <laughs> All right. I guess he just likes to watch. Do you not want to see me? I don't know. It's not you. Okay. It's me? No, it's it's the fact that he's right there. Should we move? I guess. I am sure that as you were swinging throughout the city, this giant Norman Osborn mural might have caught your eye. And it is particularly interesting that it seems to depict the storyline of the first game with the Devil's Breath. But interestingly enough, he also seems to sport some green and purplish horns, both colors that are actually typically associated with a certain character by the name of Green Goblin. A nice bit of foreshadowing here. This next one is going to be a bit of a heartbreaker because if you don't know, one of the most infamous Easter eggs from the very first Marvel Spider-Man game is the Proposal Easter Egg, where a gamer convinced Insomniac to include a proposal for his girlfriend within the game. And Insomniac obliged, only for the couple to break up and things got very, very messy to say the least. Well, in place of that theater that featured the proposal line now stands a health clinic by the name of Heart. Clearly, a reference to the heartbreak that involved the original Easter egg. Now, if you played Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales, you most definitely should be able to recall that Genki, Miles' best friend, was working on a video game project called Speed Nonagon. Well, guess what? It seems like he actually did finish the game, as a copy of the game may be found in Peter's house. Somebody should tell him, though, to maybe make some better box art. The next Easter egg should speak for itself, so let's just play it. Nice doggy kitty robot. Okay, well, just in case if you're uncertain as to what exactly just happened then, that little Ruro, I think I said that correctly, from Spider-Man is obviously a reference to the legendary Scooby-Doo. And finally, the last Easter egg is one that may have massive implications for what is next for the Insomniac Games universe. When playing Marvel Spider-Man 2, you most definitely saw the spiral logo on the meteorite rock that Venom so desperately wants to get a hold of. Well, that is no ordinary logo, as that is actually the logo that belongs to the King of Symbiotes, Null. He's an incredibly powerful villain from the Marvel Comics universe, who should definitely be a force to be reckoned with should Insomniac ever choose to bring him into their story. 
I don't know if they will, but they most definitely have planted the seeds for such a possibility. And there you have it, guys. 50 Easter eggs and details in Marvel Spider-Man 2. And there are so many more. So make sure to hit the thumbs up button and share the video with a fellow Spider-Man fan if you would like me to make a part two for this video. Thank you guys so very much for watching, and I'll hopefully catch you all here on the next one.